morning, and welcome to Chemistry in the Air. I'm your host, Joel Stelka, and hot dog we got in out of sight class today. Today's class is brought to you by Surly Cow Punch of Steel Wool, the best brand wool. I've got it. You've seen it before. You know it. You love it. Get your dishes sparkling clean. Nature of acids and bases. Let's go through this as a group, and if you're having your assignment out, set it aside. I will help you. I want you to just go through this. I don't want you getting behind. So I've given you the notes so that we don't get right? Nature of acids and bases, let's go through it. The properties of acids and bases were well known before there was a workable theory that explained and predicted their behavior. Early theories of acids and bases were proposed by men like Antoine Lavoisier, Humphrey Davy, Jean Perrine. Okay, now I'm going to pause though for the first paragraph. Let's get to it. Like I said, you guys will have time for the first um, You could predict their behavior. We did that yesterday. We knew the properties of acids and bases, a lot of them you knew beforehand. Uh, acids taste sour, bases are slippery when you think about some of these things. Bases taste bitter. You probably didn't know that. You don't need to taste bitter. Um, the pH thing, I think a lot of you kind of knew about 7 is the neutral on the pH scale, lower than 7 is acidic. So those are the kind of properties and stuff like this that were known. They didn't have pH scale way back when. But the early theory here, Lavoisier, French dude, Proposed that oxygen created the acidic properties that acids, and that acids were combinations of oxides and water. This explained why carbonated water is acidic, but it couldn't explain why something like magnesium oxide is a base, but it explained some things. So his theory was a start. So then working on and building on over the next while or whatever, this is a long time ago, right? Like, Lavoisier was around during the French Revolution. I think his head was chopped off. Honestly, I do. Anyway, Sir Humphrey Davy proposed that hydrogen was responsible for acidic properties of acids. That explained, so, and this is something we already say so far before this unit, I said, if you see an H at the start, other than water, H2O, it's probably an acid, HCl, you know, it's like H2SO4, nit nitric acid, HNO3. Uh, H. That's sort of what we go by as a simple definition so far. We'll have a better definition. So that explained why HCl is acidic and HNO3, nitric acid, is acidic. But it didn't explain why ammonia, NH3, is a base. By the way, ammonia is like water. Water is the correct scientific name for H2O, not dihydrogen monoxide. Don't use that. Uh, Ammonia, you would not say nitrogen trihydrate. Ammonia is a memorized one. And in high school science, there's only the two, those are the only two memorized names. The rest use a system, you know, the monodi tri or out the, the um, ionic naming system. Right? Everything else uses NH3 is ammonia. Not confused with no ammonia. Right? But ammonia is a base, and ammonia is the stuff in Windex that has that. Smell. Ammonia is the stuff that was produced the other day in the test tube. I didn't want it to be too strong. Now, I had a little whiff of it, and I didn't want it to be too strong. Gas in there. Svat Arrhenius. Now, the Arrhenius definition is actually a really good definition of this. It doesn't explain everything, but we'll talk about it. Anyway. Acid. Any substance that delivers hydrogen to the solution. So HCl would. Base, any substance that delivers a hydroxide, OH negative, to the solution. So we're going to see a lot of hydroxides. As soon as you see a hydroxide, that's a base. Each of the above theories explain why the prop some of the properties of acids and bases, but failed to either include all known acids and bases or correctly explain some of the known behaviors of acids and bases. The Arrhenius definition is a simple one. 
and it explains a majority of the acids and bases that we use in high school. We're going to also have a little more, a uh, little better uh, definition, but still, I'd say this is this is important. So we're going to play around with this in HCl. What do I mean by an Arrhenius? Treat this as an Arrhenius acid or an Arrhenius base. Well, it's about the cell. It separates into its ions. HCl is actually a gas that's bubbled into water, just like uh, carbonate, carbonated water. Same thing. So, in water, so H, and it's a positive. We're familiar with this, so you lose the ion card if you don't. Okay. And that's what it gives off H plus in water. That's an acid. That's your Arrhenius definition. And your base, any substance which delivers hydroxide ions to the fluid. Anytime you see, a, and I have this underneath with stuff, we use the Arrhenius base equation most of the time with hydroxide compounds. Okay. So anytime you see hydroxide compounds treated as an Arrhenius base, even when we have other options. So this separates, and calcium has a P plus here. Then there's going to be two groups of hydroxide. So we bracket this, so two groups of OH. Okay. 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 So the majority of the bases we use in high school or talk about. Hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a very common one. It's very strong. But it's quite caustic. Taste. I don't want to just sit around it. So bring it up and use it in both sides. Okay. Anyway. Okay, so we're good with this case. So hydroxides automatically think. Acid name. First time is a grade 10. It depends how much time. You guys didn't have time. I know you were in a two month quint. There's no way you could cover everything. You probably didn't talk about naming acids in grade 10. Did you? Any of you? Yeah? What did you take? Was it here? With the. Okay, and you guys did naming system? Okay. Are you the only one? I wouldn't be surprised if Zach did too. But did you work with this stuff? Did you do the acid base naming? Not too sure? Okay. It's not too difficult to do. So, acids often contain non metal atoms with hydro written first. That's why it's an H. You use the IDE ending, or if you have the IDE ending, you use it in the acid name. So, what I'm talking about is HF. <coughs> well, you could say that's how did you derive if you're not talking about it being an acid dissolved in water. But once it's dissolved in water, it's acid. <coughs> Instead of hydrogen fluoride, it's a hydro written first. That's what you're talking about. Instead of the I D E N E, I use the ick. So, which chems? And we'll say hydrofluoric acid. Actually, I have it rewritten. Hydrofluoric acid. Never heard of hydrofluoric acid or any else you use? It's actually not considered a strong acid, but that doesn't mean it's not dangerous. It's actually really uh, nasty. Hydrofluoric acid, sometimes used in art supply stores, and you can buy weak hydrofluoric acid at Michael's and, or art supply stores because you can etch glass. But because you can etch glass with it, you can't keep it in glass containers. It'll eat away at glass. And the reason why I ask is, anybody remember anything about it? I'm pretty sure, not 100%. Was it hydrofluoric acid? I think on Breaking Bad, it was used in the second episode or something like this to dissolve a body. Then it ate through the bathtub. Because Jesse didn't get the right plastic and stuff like this. Yeah, you have to, it'll eat through things. It's actually very nasty. And we don't keep it here because it's like there's no need, it's too dangerous. 
hydroiodic acid. So let's work the other way around. So hydro means hydrogen at the start. Okay, not at the time. Iodic. Iodic. Well, it comes from the again in okay, from hydrogen iodide. So hydrogen, base plus. Iodide. So you're thinking, at least you look this up. Think this. I negative, iodide. And I put those together for the formula. It's one two. There we are. Fine. So then what? HCl. I think you actually knew this one. This is great. H2 HCl. What is that? Hydrochloric. From hydrogen chloride? Hydrochloric. Now, those three examples are all from the 17th column of the table. The only one, the column that I didn't put on there was bromine, hydrobromine now, HBR. Those are the simple ones. The rest of the acids we tend to use in high school are from polyatomic acids. And while your sheet goes goes slowly, acids with polyatomic ions. Well, with those you look at the anions. You can use ink instead of H or house instead of ice. And we're talking about the name on the polyatomic ion sheet. It's the second last page in your handout. Sometimes you have to add an R in before the ink of the outs. And this is actually what I'm going to focus on more. Okay. By the way, these ones don't start with hydrogen. So these are ones where we have to add the R. That's why I was saying I'm focusing on the exceptions of the rule. R. So hydrogen, and then the sulfate ion, SO4. That's the sulfate. So H. I wouldn't say sulfic acid. This is the sulfuric acid you might have heard of. Most people have heard of it. So this is one where you add in the R. Instead of sulfate, sulfuric acid. Then the next one, though, you actually don't see SO3 a lot, but That is, if you look up, sulfite. I've actually never had in my lab this type of acid, but it's an acid. That's the same thing. But instead of sulfurous acid, I'll say sulfurous. Sometimes you add in an R before you get to the other. You're getting a feel for it. And there's just so many, not that many. Acids that we talk about in high school. So, if I say sulfuric acid, that's what I'm talking about. Sulfuric acid, SO4. Okay. Now, here's another one with the R exception. Phosphoric, it's A, but there's no phosphoric, it's phosphate. You have to look on your periodic table and find the phosphate ions. So I'm going to let you do that. Uh, the periodic chart of ions that you have in the top center. Second last page. Someone's going to tell me what the phosphate ion is. I'm going to have a sheet put in front of me. I can give you some sticky stuff. That's about it. Okay, what's that? PO3. Take a look again at your PO3 temperature. Phosphate. PO4. 
you like it, come root. Yeah. Wow. Don't get caught in your hair. Like, I mean, this, I'm desperate for this stuff. Wait a minute. I actually have something more worthwhile. As Austin mentioned, CO4, which is 3 minus. Now, with this one, So I think, when I write it on the margin, and then I put my final answer down. If that has three negatives, how many positives do I need? Three positives. And eight plus one. So when I think that, yeah, I need three eight plus, right? You might think absolute value crisscross, as in eight three one root of three four, right? But that's what we're getting. So our formula, H3PO4, for that reason. Okay. Yeah. 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 And nitric does not come from one of those exceptions to the rule. It's a nitric And that is which? NO3. NO3. NO3 is a minus one ion. So H. One to one ratio. There we go. Okay, we're moving along. Oh, I'm going to put those back. Now, Monster Lowry theory. Nineteen twenty three, swirl upside down. Four. Let's take a look at this because we know vinegar and acetic acid is an acid. That's a bit vinegar. And the final word is chaku, CH3, COOH. We're going to learn, though, that on an organic acid, carbon and hydrogen type acid, the COOH ending is going to tell you it's an acid. And it's the last H on those kind of acids that is removed. Because if you look here, this gives off an H plus, and it is gone for on the other two. Ammonia is a base, and that was mentioned before. It doesn't have hydroxide in it. You don't know right away it's base, but it's, you're going to kind of memorize it. It's the most common non hydroxide base that you can have. They talk about it. And it's actually used in pasta, Rico. Any pasta. And it picks up an H. So vinegar plus ammonia, acid plus base. Makes what's called ammonium, that's the ion, and it's on the and the acetate acid. So Bronsted Lowry in 1923. Wow, 100-year anniversary. Congratulations, Bronsted Lowry theory. This is your 100-year anniversary. I, wow, I just realized that. Wow, this is big. Do we do something? Yeah. We should have a shot. Later. Yeah. Yeah. No, again. Yeah. Again, yeah, but later. When Bronsted and Lowry examined this reaction, they defined vinegar as an acid. But it donates a hydrogen ion to the ammonia. Okay? Now, the hydrogen ion was already something we thought about with acid anyway. It was an H plus completely. But ammonia is a base. Why, though? It doesn't have hydroxide. Well, it's a base because it accepts hydrogen acceptor. So, this. Acid. Their definition, which we will use a lot, is a substance that donates hydrogen ions, protons, in solution. When I say proton, hydrogen weighs one atomic mass because it is only one proton and one electron at different atoms. But when you form the ion, you remove that one electron. All you really hydrogen ion is just a proton. So we will often say, add or gain a proton. 
meaning outer gain or higher than I. That's the proton. That's what I'm talking about. And a base is a substance that accepts hydrogen ions or accepts protons. So, what are we talking about here? How do I get this into a reaction? Well, where we go? HCl, the chloric acid, plus water. And you'll notice I have a one way arrow, but I told you this is acid base equilibrium. See, the two strong acids we'll tell you what they both one way only. Okay. The other ones will use double arrows. I should maybe say I'll check this one too. HCl plus water. So we know HCl is the acid. So what it's going to do is this H here. So it's going to add it to the water. So it's, it's going to give it off. Now I'm going to show that what's going to happen. Like this. So HCl gives us, oh, we should label it good. We know this is the acid. So we have acid base pairs. The water is going to act as a base in this situation. Now, acid, the job of an acid is it donates hydrogen on. So it's going to donate the H plus. If if water or if HCl loses the H plus, all that's left behind is the Cl minus. So that's what I'm going to write down. This is in water, so it's going to be H here. Now the base is the water, H2O. And it's the job of the base to accept that H plus. So now we're going to have H3O. But it also gained a positive charge when it got that H plus. It was a neutral zero charge for water. Now it's H2O plus. We have a name for that, it's called hydronium. And because I really want to emphasize this Bronsted Lowry definition throughout the course, this unit, I'm going to primarily use H2O in my acid base reaction instead of H. When you go to university, it'll, it'll be simplified, and I, because I want to drive this home, it's really easy just using H. HCl turns into H and Cl minus. You'll use it that way probably more often. But in my course, for this unit, we're going to use H3O a lot. We're going to use this form going up. Uh, so, so bicarbonate acting as a base. I'm going to show bisulfate acting. Okay. So, so this is the base that water has to act as an acid. The water can act as an acid or a base, depending on what I tell you. Now, bicarbonate, where have you heard of that before? Calibrand baking soda. The best <laughs> baking soda on the market, Calibrand. Get it here today at your favorite grocery aisle, Seven. Anyway, that's sodium bicarbonate, right? Baking soda. And we know it acts as a base. Talked about it before. Baking soda and vinegar, right? Acid plus base. Okay. Anyway, if it is acting as a base, that means one of the water H pluses are going to be lost to be donated to the carbonate. That means you're going to have another H in that formula and it's going to gain a positive charge to mix with the negative charge. You got the H plus and the HCO2 minus. So what happens is, is the base does its job. It's a substance that accepts a proton ion or a proton or hydrogen ion. So H2CO3. When it gets that positive charge from the H plus, it adds to the negative one on the bicarbonate. Comes out as zero. That's H. 
the water lost one of the eggs. You might think hydroxide. Don't think HO though. I want you to write that as OH because that's the proper way to write hydroxide. Let's reverse it. So this means that when you have a base like HCO3, a carbon, you have your original Arrhenius definition as bases are things that uh, give off hydroxide in solution. Well, hydroxide is still used in this uh, equation. Hydroxide. Anyway, okay. I'm not going to go on. So his idea wasn't garbage. He wants to do the hydroxide. Now, I show bisulfate actually there. So then this must be a base. So bisulfate. HSO4 minus acts as an acid. It gives away its H plus and it becomes SO4 with a C minus. Okay. Then the water would have picked up that excess. It's acting as a base. It's H3O. The water either becomes hydroxide or hydronium Hydronium ion. Right? By the way, in this unit, because it's equilibrium still. Very important that we still have equals. However, now you wouldn't know this in advance, but I need to repair these equations a little bit. Double arrow for the last two, not the first one. And you don't know this yet, but HCl is a strong mass. The other two, we're going to use double arrow. Okay? They're weak. And more about how to tell them. What I handed out was heat. So I'm not going to redo these things, but the notes underneath are just reorganized a little bit. Amphoteric. No ambidextrous means left or right handed, right? Amphibian, land and water, right? Amphoteric can be either acid or base. Examine water in the above reactions. Well, the ones we were on this page. Water, you saw, act as an acid or a base. In my carbonate reactions, behaving like an acid, I told you so. Donate the proton. By sulfate reactions, behaving as a base, it accepts the proton. We say that those are amphoteric substances. Substances that work as an acid or a base. Amphoteric. Okay. There's nothing to do on this page but to feel on something. Not just water, though. We will see a little more there. So, do you have one more thing on this, or is that the last thing? Yeah. Well, it was terrible, harvest. 